हरि ओम हरि ओम हरि ओम हेलो माय फ्रेंड्स हियर वी आर अगेन we have quite some wind here so maybe my image will shake sometimes <laughs> the computer on the cardboard box on the table sometimes moving a bit with the wind <laughs> okay Shall we start straight away? Is there anybody who would like to talk straight away? You are welcome to come in. Hello, Bernard. Hello. Hariom. <laughs> Hariom, Rebecca. <laughs> uh, could you please talk about uh, the inner freedom? The inner freedom. Yes. The, the, the other day I was talking with a, pre, a, with a friend. And I mean, nowadays, because that situation, many people is angry, you know, because they think because they are uh, forced to wear a mask or follow some yeah. rules that uh, their freedom is, is, is in danger. But I mean, I, I had the feeling that there is freedom is a different thing, no? And it's... Is, is inside you. It doesn't matter what is happening on your surrounding, but how to deal with that inner freedom and outer freedom? Yeah. You <laughs> right. For many people, the idea of freedom means that we can do whatever we like. <laughs> but I mean, it is never possible that we always can do whatever we like. And if we are making our well-being dependent, that we can act all the time, the way we like it, then sometimes we will be very unhappy about it and to have the feelings we are not free. What we have to liberate from is exactly that idea that the external circumstances have to be the way I think they should be, the way I want them to be, the way I like them best. Otherwise, I'm not happy. If we can get rid of that idea, then you become aware, no matter what is happening, there is that inner, peaceful aspect of yourself. I say inner, but it's not really inner or outer, just that aspect of you that is at the base of your experience, that pure consciousness, that pure force of life, that pure love is there unaffected by anything. The more you learn to connect with that, the more you are free of the circumstances. So when you, if you want to say outer freedom is that you can do whatever you like and the inner freedom, the real freedom is that it doesn't matter whether you can do whatever you like. Whenever it's possible, do as you like. And when it's not possible, then so what? You adjust a bit to the situation, but you as a being are not affected. Actually, you are never bound. Simply our attention is so much absorbed in our mind and all the ideas we have and all the desires we have that we are not aware that for your being, freedom and bondage, they don't really exist. You simply are unaffected, unconcerned, unattached. <laughs> Bring the attention back to that and you're free. Because you become aware it could not possibly be bound. And it's not diminishing if we face circumstances that are unfavorable. 
if you are living all alone on an island, then we can behave the way we want. As soon as there are two persons, we have already to adjust. <laughs> and we are living in a crowded world with so many people. Invariably, we have to somehow adjust to that there are to the fact that there are many people and somehow we can learn to behave that we are not as little as possible affecting the freedom of others but not feel unfree because of them if you wear a mask or if you don't wear a mask you are what you are <laughs> if you bring your attention back to that then what the hell does it matter whether you have to wear a mask? So what? What the big deal? It's now one of the big issues that goes uh, around in the public that, uh, oh, this wearing mask is such a restriction, but so what? What's the big deal? Uh, doctors and nurses in operation rooms, the day after day after day, they wear masks, masks their whole lifelong the whole time they are working and they never think it's a big deal it's simply when we think oh it's so terrible to do that then it becomes a big deal <laughs> and of course right now with all the restrictions there's a lot of things that we cannot do that we would like but it is not affecting your being you are as you are unaffected by any of this, ever pure, ever unconcerned about all this. Just bring the attention back to that as good as you can. The more you are capable of doing that, the more you are really, really free. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, so it's, I mean, it's also another tricky game, no, from the mind that uh, when you are not really established, established on your inner self, you know that mm -hmm. you are always looking for something to complain, something, something to, to complain about. <laughs> yeah, I mean that does what I'm saying doesn't mean that you should let everybody come and direct you around as they like. You yeah. can very well take your stand, and if you think something is wrong, uh, some somebody tries to force you into something that you feel is wrong then you say no i'm not going to do that and if you can you avoid it but your inner peace your inner joy is not being affected by that confrontation yeah okay so because then on on the other on, in, in the, from a, another perspective, for example, when we are talking about human rights, people who is being exploited, mm -hmm. for example, sometimes I have the feeling that as a citizen, I have the, I have the, how to say, I have to help that people who is being, mm. you know, so in some way, in some way you have to fight, you have to, to do something, no, but you can still keep that inner peace, no? So right. it's, you it's can a do, very... Oh, please. Yeah. No, sorry. It's, there are two very different situations, no? Sometimes yeah. you have to act. Yeah. Sometimes you have to act. And sometimes when you feel that this is your job, it's your duty to intervene in a situation, mm. then you intervene. And that, that other times you may see uh, unjustice, you may see that people are being unjustly treated and somehow you still feel it is not your job to intervene and the best you can do is to send the, the love that you feel to those people who are in the negative situation. Yeah. You cannot think that you, it's your duty now to run around the world and <laughs> remove all the little unjustices and the big unjustices that are there. The more you are at ease, at peace in yourself, the more you are radiating something that helps that the whole general mental atmosphere starts to change and these things then happen to change all by themselves. 
But as long as people are as they are, then there will be so many injustices and people will be exploit, exploited. And if you can do something about it, and if you feel you have to, then do something about it. But you need not get all worked up about it. You still can keep your inner peace and do what, feel, what you feel is necessary. And most of the time you look out in the world and you see all these things and you see it's not really that I can go and actually do something about it. And then don't send negative emotions to them and think, oh, it's so terrible, it's so terrible. But you see the unfair situation of those people and you connect with them and you send them your love and you are helping them in your way as good as you can. Okay. <laughs> we don't have to become all worked up about what is happening in the world. If we do that, then we just add more negativity. Yeah. We don't have to become indifferent that uh, I, <laughs> not in the sense that uh, I just have to be happy, I don't care <laughs> <laughs> who, who else is happy. <laughs> no, we don't have to create that wall. We can very well feel what's going on and there's so much of sadness, there is so much of suffering going on. We don't have to somehow try to block that out, but not get attached to it. As long as you remain detached, then you can see that and you, you're very seeing that and not, you're not getting pulled into a negative state of mind is helping, is mm -hmm. bringing something positive there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, it's also a trick of the mind that uh, when I see something that I feel it's not right and then we feel so noble about it to think it's bad, bad and think I should do something, I should do something. But then again, I'm taking myself as a person, the role that I'm playing too important. It's a tricky thing, that self-importance, that person importance. We, we can feel so noble about it, but actually we just take ourselves as a person too important. And if it's clear that our role is not that we go and intervene, then we can let it go and send out something beautiful and positive. You help much more with that than feeling all bad about what is going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. For me, sometimes it's difficult to find the the balance between both because I used to be very always fighting against everything, not trying to. But then I realized that it it wasn't helping me, no, because I'm always in that kind of mood that that mm. you say, no. So now I'm trying to to find that balance. And sometimes I can be helpful not to others but without losing my my inner balance my inner peace and it's quite difficult sometimes no because when you don't realize sometimes you go to the old pattern and right. you start again again so mm. you have to go back again and stop and yeah yeah that's how we are learning that's how we are growing <laughs> yeah we make decisions i don't want to act in a certain way but then the situation comes and we forget all about it and boom, are in the old ways. But once you become aware, then you can come back. Then there is no point that you start to scold yourself and say, ah, oh, there I'm again. So just see, uh-uh, oh, oh, got me again. But then you come back. Make peace with yourself. That is the most important contribution you can possibly give. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Werner. You are Thank welcome. You. Most welcome. Um, Mario, Mario. <coughs> if anybody would like to come in, please come. Hello, Werner. Hello. Ah, hello, Andrea. Hi. I, um, I have a question regarding my meditation practice. Yes. 
Uh, normally, when I meditate, um, I more or less try to follow your pointer of turning the attention towards the source. I mean, it's, it's hard to explain, I don't know, but something like that, or just um, resting in the space or putting the attention in the attention, you know, something like that. It's usually just coming from here and very spacious. And lately I have found that I can somehow ground through the heart, but still be observing the space and observing the attention through the heart. And it's a bit more grounded, but still the focus is in this awareness, in this space. It, it's, it's hard to describe, but I think maybe you know more or less what I talk about. Yes. And, <laughs> and my question was that in comparison, um, I started practicing a little bit Qigong a couple of days ago, and I'm also trying to connect with my lower abdomen, yes. basically mainly for health. So now sometimes when I'm meditating, I am just resting the attention on the somatic field of the body. And then I can reach until the chest and I can slowly, slowly, slowly go down and I start to sense the abdomen. Mm -hmm. And it's extremely pleasant. It's really nice. It's very relaxing. But I feel it's a completely different thing to the other one. And even though when I'm in the body, it's maybe the energy body is still very spacious. It still feels to be trapped into something that is somehow less spacious than just resting in. So I think I needed your guidance whether somehow they w could be the same thing or if there have to be two different practices or I, I don't know. At one point I was feeling almost claustrophobic. It was like my attention was resting in the, all the energy body. And it was so pleasant, but at the same time it was like trapped. I don't know. I don't yeah, know yeah. what you think. Right, right. <laughs> they are not really as different as it appears. <clears throat> the superficial feeling that is so accompanied may feel different. But uh, and you are just now starting to experiment with that while you are quite familiar with the other one. But you will see yeah. if you continue what you are doing now, it will become as spacious as you experienced before. It's not that uh, if you put your attention on the body, I mean, if you get all cramped up in the body and put your attention, then you may always stay in that little space, but you can use the body sensations, the feelings in the body to bring your attention to the timelessness of the now, and if you learn to relax in that, it becomes totally spacious, in spite of being aware of the body sensations. It's not, so it, uh, it's not one or the other. You can very well combine the two. Okay, so it's like part of the attention would be rooted in the body sensations and the other part could be just looking towards the source, or, so to speak. Well, the source is not somewhere. <laughs> yeah, 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 but or not, into the space, something yeah. like that. You don't because have to look out <laughs> in, into space no, and no. might be finally It's more like <laughs> resting, like a resting in a space, right. something like that. Right, and you can, <laughs> you can rest in that space and simultaneously be aware of the body sensation. Okay, yeah, I think that's what happens when I put the focus in the heart, but when I was reaching the belly, maybe because it's new, it's is catching all the attention. Right. Okay. You can also keep the heart as your main center and then mm -hmm. become aware of the belly. But the, at the same time, you still are centered in the heart. And in a way, from that heart position, you're observing how, what is happening in the belly, in the tian tian <laughs> or something, what they, are, <laughs> yes. what they are calling it in, Tai Chi, the Hara, what the Japanese call it. And you can totally center there, but you can basically also be centered in the heart and from there observe what is going on there. If it's creating too much of a, a contradiction for you, the one or the other. But 
basically it doesn't matter, but it's good if we have a one center that we are using all the time because as a reference point for the mind, it becomes stronger and stronger the more we use it. Well, okay. you, you experiment with it and the more you relax in it, the more you become aware, no matter what you are using, what little help you are using to bring the attention to the timelessness of the now, doesn't really matter. We simply don't have to get stuck there. So if we use okay. the body sensations, if you use that feeling that you feel in the belly, then just don't get attached to that, but uh, be aware of that, but be aware of that which is aware. <laughs> okay, yeah, because I think my, my concern was to somehow get lost because I've heard, you know, they can be ultra powerful yogis that can feel everything that go inside their body and all their chakras, but that doesn't mean that they are liberated because they never turn the attention, no? So it comes this fear, like, what if I, I'm, I would still be putting attention in the manifestation if I'm focusing in Mandantian and I might miss the actual point somehow. Yeah, yeah. But the, the reason why that happens, that Hatha Yogis may be so totally aware of their body and still not really have found their freedom is because they have not learned to detach. Their motivation is not the liberation from the mind, but their motivation is that I, me, want to become more powerful. Mm. I see. It's the, okay. the basic motivation that matters totally. And then you can be a Hatha Yoga Yogi, and you can be aware of every detail in your body, but it doesn't disturb you in your inner freedom. But the, you can also, with a lot of work, attain that kind of body and subtle body awareness and still always keep that sense of me, me, me separate from the others and actually make that, that even in a means to strengthen that, that the being proud that the, and showing off in front of everybody <laughs> how, how well aware I am in the body, how powerful I have become. So it's not that the Tata Yogic practice in itself is keeping you on that level. It's simply if the Hatha Yogi has not that basic, many, uh, that basic motivation of getting rid of that me, me, separate personality sense, then uh, they can do yoga and yoga and yoga and learn all kinds of tricks and maybe develop all kinds of powers, but still keep up very equally much that sense of separation. It's that which makes the difference. We don't have to go in all that Hatha Yogic stuff, but if somebody likes it, there's nothing wrong, basically. We simply don't have to get attached to, the, on, to that level. Okay, and you feel as long as one comes with the intention that, yeah, that the main inclination, the main intention is liberation and needs to be rid of the identification, then one can use all these tools without having to fear that they would take us out of us, yes, no? okay. yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, and um, just uh, on a very similar note, um, all this, yeah, all this yogic thing, like without taking it too much to the extreme, no? But these things like to be grounded or to have your chakras balanced, I know it's very, or to have some shakti, I know it's very useful in the manifestation and to relate to other people, but does it help? For, for liberation, like somehow being more grounded makes, or having your chakras balanced would make you more likely to realize the self or does it not matter at all? It does help. Simply we don't have to become obsessive about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, see many, I see many people on the path and they, they get a bit, a bit obsessive about all this, like about balancing the chakras and doing, yeah, yeah. And doing that. And then it's defeating its own purpose, but as long as there is energetically a great imbalance in our psychophysical manifestation, then it's very difficult to de de detach. Okay. But if, if that balance is there, 
the mind automatically has the tendency to become quieter and calmer. And the, the more you are quiet and calm, the easier it is to detect where our attachment lies, where the hooks are. And then we learn to straighten out those hooks. <laughs> so by, by all means, uh, if you feel to do these kind of practices or, to, or to, do, to have treatments like this, you can do it, but don't take it too important just by the way as a help on the general path. Yeah, no, I think I was thinking the opposite, that it's just a game that cannot really help. But now I'm starting to understand, like you say, that if one balances the energy body, it can help with the... Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Werner. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Hariom, Hariom. Anybody else? You're welcome. <laughs> Wherever we go, whatever we are doing, whether we are active or whether we are inactive, there is the base, there is the pure consciousness, the pure force of life, the pure love, the first expression of what you are, that pays with its three aspects and the, out of that pays the whole experience of the world, of the universe, of the universe, of the universes, <laughs> the multiverse emerges. <clears throat> Whatever helps us to catch our attention when we are completely involved into little details and attached to them, whatever helps us to catch the attention and bring it directly back to that source, to that base, is perfectly valid, no matter what. And generally, we can say it's helpful if we have a reasonably healthy body. Of course, in the jnana path, they say, oh, the body doesn't matter, doesn't matter. I'm not the body, I'm not the body. But then the same people, as soon as they are not well in the body, all their attention has the tendency to be totally absorbed and just struggling and running around and going from one treatment to another and from one doctor to another <laughs> and then all the ideas I'm not the body are forgotten. So it makes sense that we keep our body reasonably healthy but we don't have to get obsessed with it. And it makes sense that energetically we learn to balance out our energies but we don't have to get obsessed about it. All this is helpful. The more these instruments are in tension, the more they have the tendency to disturb us, to prevent us from being aware of that aspect that is there in everybody, is totally unaffected by anything that is happening. Aware what's going on, in a way eagerly experiencing what's going on, at the same time totally unattached and unconcerned and unaffected. It's always there, whether we are quietly sitting in meditation or whether we are fully active, whether we are alone or whether we are in the crowd, whether we keep quiet or whether we are talking. It's there like a rock 
unmovable. And what matters is that we learn to connect with that consciously, that we learn to bring the attention back to that source where it belongs, where it should be, but somehow uh, being manifested in this world, growing up in this world, we have learned for a long time to do the exact opposite, to be with our attention always in something or other, concerned about something or other, worrying about something or other, <laughs> completely overlooking that all the time the space has been there. Just bring the attention back to that and relax into that. That's all we need to do, that's all we can do. <laughs> and whatever helps is perfectly valid. And some people do more yogic practices, energetic practices, some people do more devotional practices, some people go more about discrimination, pure jnana. <laughs> discriminating the real from the unreal by just observing sharper and sharper or then we find a combination of the three and each one finds their own way what is good for them and those who are on a certain way they usually say, oh, the other one, it's no good because there you get attached to this and they get attached to this and you get waylaid there. <laughs> the, that possibility is there no matter how we are going about it. Each approach, if we are not vigilant, we have the tendency to just change our attitude of the personality change the coloring of the personality but keep that personality intact and we create a new what some people sometimes call a spiritual ego on our approach and it's not that one approach is more prone to that than another it depends entirely our vigilance that we have a good honest look at ourselves Again and again and again, because the tendency is that even if we get rid of certain aspects of our ego, of our personality, of our old attachments, that it comes in sneaking in again in a subtler way. <laughs> and Andrea mentioned that yogis may develop so much power and maybe not be free. That's totally true. We have to be vigilant, but also the devotee has to be vigilant. We can be a devotee and develop a devotional behavior, a humble behavior, and be so proud of our humility and show with the whole world how humble we are. <laughs> it's always possible that that mind is establishing itself again new because somehow we don't want to give up that sense of me, me, a separate being. Being afraid if I let go of that, then I'm losing something precious. But actually what we are losing is all that which creates suffering, which creates trouble. So we can use established practices or we can also sometimes improvise and people find out their own totally unique way of somehow catching the attention and bringing it back home to that timelessness here now and whatever works is perfectly well there's not one thing that is better than another what, what is natural for one person is not natural for another person. We are always free. <laughs> Actually for the self the word freedom doesn't mean anything because there is no bondage. The word freedom simply means something when we feel we are in bondage. 
and then we have to get rid of that bondage and liberate, and get free. But you simply are unaffected, uncontrolled. There is a bubbling, beautiful joyousness in it that is not created by circumstances, that is not created by certain things. This is just a natural aspect of it. Okay, my friends, is there anyone who would like to come in? Hello, Werner. Ah, uh, hello, Delhi. <laughs> Uh, first, I want to uh, to say thank you for your encouragement and support in my um, in my new attitude of meditation. Um, I feel uh, more happy with my um, with this uh, different, a little different uh, attitude uh, when I began. Uh, using uh, slow motions and rounds and I uh, go on with it and I feel myself much better and easy and uh, my dancing before meditation it, um, it works good for me <laughs> very good <laughs> very good <laughs> uh, and I uh, want to ask something uh, when I watch my uh, my breath and um, I watch some uh, that goes on in my body, I I I thought to you last time I feel uh, some pain in my low part of the body, and it happens not only during meditation but in real life too, and I as I feel it that it, it is uh, this is connected connected with the uh, emotions very close yeah uh, i feel that uh, there are some fears and worries and uh, uh, some uh, low emotions connected with this pain um, some disconnection and uh, displeasure and uh, so on uh, and i just watch it and um, when it becomes too too hard, I do slow motions, but uh, it goes on for many years with me. Um, okay, uh, of course it became much better, but uh, I work with it. Uh, I think maybe more than ten years when I first began um, feel this pain, yeah. and uh, I want to ask you. Uh, should I go on like this or maybe I don't do something uh, I, I maybe I don't do it effective maybe I should do something more effective to to release from it or maybe I just catch it so much that's why I it, it's it's uh, still it's still with me <laughs> stays with me so long well deep rooted Vasanas, deep-rooted habits, deep-rooted traumas that we have accumulated somehow or other, they may just simply not go so easily. And sometimes uh, when you see it, then uh, things disappear and sometimes you have to deal with it and it goes on and on and on and on and on. <coughs> I guess you are doing fine. Maybe a little ex just continue what you are doing, but a little extra tip that when that pain comes, you are aware of the pain. You don't try to screen it out, but then try to be aware of the whole rest of the body who is not in pain. And relax whatever whatever you can relax. <laughs> when, the, when the lower part, when the belly is aching, but the legs are fine, then 
Relax your legs. Relax your feet. Relax your shoulders, relax your arms. And then maybe that may help that at least for the moment, also what is creating that pain in the belly also may, may disappear. It may or may not, but you just being aware as you are already aware is already good, but you can add to it that you relax in it as good as you can. But don't go with the attention and fix yourself at the point where it's paining and try to relax that point. It doesn't work well. But be aware of that point, be aware of that region in your body. But be aware that there is the rest of the body who doesn't feel that pain. And then relax where you feel okay. And then the, the point the region that is paining has the tendency also to relax more and the pain may disappear, may disappear for the moment, may get a bit stronger for some time, but then may get, will start to get less. But when it's disappeared, that doesn't mean the next time it's not coming back. <laughs> Old habits die not so easily sometimes, so when it comes back, you just treat it again like that. So. Continue with what you are doing, just give on top of that a bit more an emphasis of relaxing your whole body as good as you can. Oh, okay, yes, and today I, I noticed that when I uh, watch my breath uh, in the nose and, and then deeper I watch it then more my body squeeze and uh, like uh, squeezes and uh, like uh, there is some splinter in my in in it's some splinter and some steak i feel it um, very strong and uh, i i do slow motions because sometimes it's uh, impossible to to relax staying still um, mm. only uh, movement some movements helps mm. me sometimes yeah yeah, yeah. Then, uh, continue your movements when it's necessary <laughs> you can try to relax when you are sitting quietly and if it's not working then you help with moving also yes yeah, sometimes i i think how to relax how physically to relax if without no uh, movements and i really can't do this i i try but i feel uh, this uh, tension in my low part of the body and or, or maybe in my neck in my jaw i feel it but and i ask myself how how can i to re how can i relax it just sitting i now I I can't. So only only movements now I can I can use to release it. Right. You can give the impulse when you are sitting quietly and you feel maybe it's doing something and if it's not doing anything and it's getting too heavy, then you do it along with movement. That's okay. Okay, Werner. Thank mm. you. You're welcome. <laughs> Hario. Is there anybody else who would like to come? Please come. This is a very intense time, a very intense period in human history right now. Not simply because of the virus and all the 
effects that it had on society, but there is really an intensity. And it's worth the trouble to make the attempt to be alert, and to let go, and to relax, and to detach. No matter how much we are successful in it or not successful, every attempt is counting. And right now, it's especially counting. <laughs> if the surroundings, if the world is relatively harmonious and peaceful, then it may need much more time, it may need much more effort to have the same effect that we can have now. Because there is such an intensity, it's worth the trouble. Remind ourselves again and again, be here, be now, be consciously conscious, not half asleep. Be alive in the timelessness of the now. That's the only point we are anyhow alive. Only here now, all else is in the mind. And right now there is such an intensity, every time you consciously bring your attention to that, it's like you really tuning in to that intensity and something is happening to everybody. Even if we don't feel the effect, but everybody becomes quickly, easily stronger. It's unfolding. Sometimes we may for a long time <coughs> not feel any difference in our conscious experience, especially if there are pains, especially if there is something that is really troubling, then the attention may be so absorbed in that again and again that we are not aware that behind it, in a subtler level, something is tremendously growing, something is tremendously unfolding. And in this period, it's, it's worth the trouble. It's always worth the trouble, but in this period, it's really very, very advisable not to waste this opportunity. Doesn't mean everybody should now start to do only spiritual practices day in and day out. If somebody has the opportunity, if somebody wants to do so, fine. This is helpful. But no matter what we are doing in our normal, so-called normal life, in our external life, in our profession, in our working place, in the family, with friends, with people, with unfriendly people, <laughs> wherever we are, that we learn to be aware of that aspect in us that is not affected by it. Learn to get rooted in that more and more and more. Every attempt is counting. How much we are successful from moment to moment in our attempts is not really in our hands. But whether we are attempting or not, that we can influence. The more we go about it, the more easily it comes to go naturally, spontaneously it comes. There I'm talking again. <laughs> Anybody? If you want to come in, please come in. Thirty three people here. <laughs> Nobody wants to say something. Hello, Vanessa. 
Ana. Oh, hello. Anita. Hi. Uh, so valuable for me what you just said. And I just wonder how, how it is possible that it is so fleeting, you know, it's so, I need to get reminded again and again. Hmm. And if you talk about it, it's so clear and it's so touching and so beautiful. Uh, but how is it? It's so, yeah, it's not graspable. It's not that I hear it and I will remember it all the time. Mm. I don't. It's amazing. It's amazing. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> right. When you are here, when you are in this space, even if we are not sitting in the physical same space, but we are creating a space together with this satsang, and you are here for that, so then of course it's easier. And everything seems simpler and makes sense immediately. And then we go out and there the usual old surroundings are there and along with the old surroundings so many memories so many habits they waiting there like to trap your attention and bring it back it's the mind has the tendency to repeat the same things over and over and over when we have been feeling thinking talking acting in certain ways the tendency is to repeat it uh, the more we have done that, the stronger the pull is. And when you are sitting here with us, then you are continuously reminded not to do that, <laughs> but to connect with that which is not affected by that. But then when you are in your day-to-day -day life, in your surroundings more, focused on your surroundings, the tendency is that because of the memory that comes with it, the habit that is attached to it, that it pulls your attention in the old way of functioning. Don't think that uh, nothing is happening. Don't think because it's happening again and again and again that uh, this is pulling you in so strongly that it's all useless. It's no drop of any attempt you made is wasted. Suddenly it builds up a strength that gradually then is getting stronger than the strength of the old habit. But as long as it is there, then don't get frustrated with it. Just learn to be a bit playful. Oh, oh got me again. Now I come back. <laughs> and then on top of that of course whole humanity functions in that way the most although it's as I said uh, again before it's a very special time but still the whole humanity functions in a certain way and we are connected to that and it's influencing our mind and as long as we are focused with our attention on that mental level the pull is very strong to just go into the general stream and it's quite a task to learn to detach from that and what you are doing to come back to that again and again and you remember that's the way to go about it mm. but i never come back so easily and so also clear as when you put this in words and whatever words you you're using then it's it's clear when i sit down and meditate and try to come back it's coming sometimes a little bit but but when you talk about it it's so clear but now it's also somehow not so clear right now but just <laughs> before <laughs> yeah <laughs> but that's the that's the point of creating such a space that's the point of satsang that uh, in between you have that space you have that experience where it's easier but then the job is uh, to bring that as good as you can 
into the other time when you are not in that satsang space. <laughs> and there may be periods where it's easier. You feel, oh, finally it's a bit easier and then, woo, that goes again. And then there is a period, it seems it's just not working at all. But it's not, when this is happening, it's not that we are somehow falling back, that we are retracting. It's simply normal that on the way, sometimes it's uh, easier and sometimes it's again more difficult. Yeah. Of course, in our mind, we would like that it would go like this, a nice curve that goes, <laughs> that's making it easier and easier, that goes up. But the, the story usually is rather like this. <laughs> and if you could take an average, if you could see that the, the average, then still that curve would be there. But then when we are in a period where it's rather feels like, zoom, it's, it's more difficult again, then it feels, oh my God, uh, what has it done all the years I have tried, I'm not getting anywhere. Don't believe this kind of arguments of the mind. Just, okay, accept it. It's a bit more difficult right now again, so I'll do what I can. I guess it's, it's also the mind who wants to make um, a picture of it, um, to be able to remember, but it's not from the mind, it's, isn't it? That it's the mind who wants to capture it and to, to be able to recall it, but it's something yeah, which is just in the moment, very alive. Right. But the yeah. mind is never... <laughs> the call comes from the self. That uh, your attention comes home. <laughs> but then, of course, we have to give the mental impulse. It's the with the mind that we are creating all the troubles. And there is our attention. So we have to catch the attention on the level where it is on the mental level and that same mind that is creating all the troubles is the instrument to turn the attention in the right direction to liberate you ourselves from those troubles the, it's not mind is the devil mind is bad <laughs> that capacity to put the attention on consciousness and form consciousness into reasonable thoughts is something beautiful. There's nothing wrong with it. It's simply, uh, it's an instrument that should be used in its own level. And then it's taking more and more and more space. And we've gotten used that then uh, it's a total compulsion that from the moment one wakes up till we go to sleep, it just goes on and on and on and on. And so we have to learn not to do that anymore in one way or another. But the mind is not something bad. The mind is that capacity to think. And to think is nothing bad. It's beautiful. It's an expression of the self. But that compulsory thinking all the time and going around the same story and always strengthening that sense of separation, me, 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 I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and the others are thinking about that, that creates a, such a tension that makes us suffer. But we can use that same mind, okay, intend to remember. When you start your day, you intend to remember. <laughs> like the little clip that has been posted recently. <laughs> You intend that you want to remember, and then in your daytime, you remember at that moment you just connect. And even if you connect only a short time, even if it's just three seconds that you are really consciously here now, those three seconds are very precious. Mm. And if we do that consequently, whenever we remember, 
We can also remember and then instead of doing it, think, oh my God, it's such a long time since I had the last lucid moment. And then we are totally in the story again and uh, complain about it or scold ourselves. Oh, what is the use? Uh, not getting anywhere. <laughs> I'm no good. Not getting ever anywhere. And uh, all this stuff we can just bypass. The moment you remember, you connect and relax. And if you do that consequently, then the memory comes back easier. And gradually it will happen that it's also easier to stay in that peaceful space a bit longer. Of course, then we eject ourselves, it's our mental activity that ejects ourselves, but then the main mind has found a new thing to complain about, oh my god, I'm, uh, I lost it again, and that's again a mental story. But instead of doing that, just come back home and relax. We have to learn to be a bit playful about it, and not to look at it as a terrible task to perform. Whenever you become aware, uh oh, I was again all over the place instead of just being here now. So what? So what? What's the big deal? Right now, you come home and relax. If you can develop a playful mood, then it's not being seen as a terrible, terrible thing that we have to somehow learn and achieve. But okay, playfully go about it and that sense of joy and playfulness gradually will increase and, and eventually it will be so natural to just be rooted here. Don't lose the courage, just continue. <laughs> Shall we leave it at that? Yes. Okay, hurry on, hurry on. <laughs> Is there anybody else who would like to say something? What we just have been talking about with Anita. The tendency in the mind to always criticize, and think, oh, I'm no good. <laughs> think, oh, it's so terrible, it's so difficult. It's happening to everybody, more or less. I remember that very well. I did it all the time. Whoa, oh, oh, must do something totally wrong. Otherwise, it should be different. <laughs> something should happen. <laughs> yeah. When we catch ourselves doing that, then just tell yourself, no, don't believe it. You just go on. When we are in the midst of our story, time seems to go slow. It seems, it looks like it's taking such a long time, but time is very relative. Once you are out of that struggle, it doesn't matter how long it took. Short time, long time, because you are timeless. Compared to the timelessness, no matter how much time, it's just a moment. <laughs> it's nothing. A few days, a few weeks, a few months, a few years, a few decades. It comes, it goes, it's done like this. But if we can develop a more playful, gentle attitude with ourselves, then it's not simply working towards a goal and one day I will be happy, but 
we can learn to become quite happy, relatively happy, on the way, wherever we are. Learn to be, just to be, just to be here now, and relax and become aware that joyousness is always there. We don't have to produce it, we don't have to seek it, it's not coming from something, it's not coming from somewhere, it's not coming from some time in the future. It is an aspect of existence and if we stop preventing it, it starts to bubble up. Recently somebody told me, but if you are only happy, if you are not unhappy in between, then you don't have the contrast and then being happy also becomes boring. <laughs> that would be only if we attach our happiness to the circumstances, if we attach our happiness to certain things that have to be there in order to be happy. But the joyousness of existence is self-fulfilling. And actually what is happening, if we don't disturb it, it's not something static. Essentially, there is something that doesn't change. There's something that is like a rock. But the experience of that, if we don't disturb it, keeps on unfolding and unfolding and the joyousness of existence is being experienced stronger and stronger and stronger. It cannot possibly become boring. It's not that we have to make ourselves unhappy in between in order to appreciate happiness. <laughs> There's no limit to it. So my friends, anybody wants to talk, please come. <laughs> Hello, Werner. Hello, Nelly. There you are again. <laughs> oh, yes, it's me again. I want to... One moment. Yes, uh, last satsang we talked about death and some projections uh, in this life that we make and some experiences uh, that we have, uh, that we get in this life and uh, learn and, to, and learn something to grow and so on. Uh, so I just uh, remember some situation in my life uh, uh, many years ago when I had a lot of difficulties and I had a strong fear of life. Uh, I was not afraid of death, but uh, maybe this is something the same, but I felt a very strong fear of life and uh, I, I had fears in all the spheres of my life and I was afraid to, to leave too. I, I remember that I was afraid to wake up. And when I wake up, waked up, I, I said, oh my God, this nightmare again. I don't want to come here. I want to close my eyes and die and never, never wake up. And I remember that I, re um, I really wanted to stop living and um, I, I thought that death is, uh, makes me, gives me some, will give me some relief and, uh, and so on. And I, I thought about it and uh, um, I was in these uh, feelings and then some um, understanding came to me that uh, I can't avoid this nightmare of uh, which I feel now in my life. It, it was very difficult for me, but uh, death can't relieve my, um, 
my difficulties, my my fears, uh, because uh, I will um, I, I will come into another life then with all this baggage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again and. <laughs> And uh, I I can't avoid it by um, by uh, um, living this life uh, because these feelings will come again and again before I go through this before I get this experience before I feel I should feel it and uh, go through this so I felt this uh, and. <laughs> I understood that I should do something in this life I to uh, to release from these feelings that I just wanted to share to share this experience good it's uh, it happens to many people <laughs> especially people who then start to turn spiritual <laughs> usually people who are in circumstances and feel quite happy with the circumstances they are not very much interested in going deeper it's usually people who have somehow had enough and then of course that idea i think it comes to many it has been with me in my youth when i grew up at least, if nothing else works, there's always a way out. <laughs> At least, somehow, maybe I can, maybe I can stop the suffering. <laughs> but then there is always that nagging doubt, but what if not? Huh? <laughs> but if it doesn't work <laughs> to escape the suffering? <laughs> but it's it's good that you decided to stay with us. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's not so much uh, that uh, if you go out of that story, that you are condemned to be in the exact same story again. Certainly, somehow, something is alive there that has to be worked out. We cannot simply. Uh, dropped it by escaping but also for another reason it's it's not a point to go that short way out because actually we have decided that being that you are not the person that we think you are now but that being that you are has decided i'm going into this world i'm going to pro and projecting myself into this magic show for the sake of making experience and so if we cut it short then somehow it's most likely that uh, you're being decides but uh, anyhow i had some things more i wanted to experience and set up a similar story again so it's much more advisable to go to our life and learn here even in this world with all the possibility for pain with all the possibility for suffering learn to be rooted in that which is not suffering actually that's the spiritual motivation why is, are we at all looking for something else because something in us feels I don't want to suffer I have had it I don't want to go on suffering 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 but then we try to find a way of existing without suffering being afraid of life is in a way also fear of death <laughs> because yeah. because it's still we have the feeling our life should be totally different our life should be expensive because that deep down we know that consciousness is naturally expensive 
so that longing is there, that the experience should be expensive. And then being so locked up in our mind, in our experiences, it's like a death. And we don't want to die. We don't want that death. And uh, so the idea can come, okay, we can take the shortcut out, <laughs> escape the thing. But we didn't come for nothing into this world. It's not that it's somehow a cosmic accident <laughs> that we have come here, but each one who is here, their true being has decided, okay, I want to go there. I want to go through this story. It's most beneficial because in this magical combination of a physical body, of the life energy, of consciousness, of all the emotions, the thoughts, all the energies. It's such a magical situation where in short time something tremendously valuable can be accumulated. And everybody who goes out of this life is much richer than what we come in. And so your being has projected yourself as a person and the way out of course by now you have very well found out is not to kill yourself <laughs> but to detach from that role from that person and become aware of what you are become aware that yourself is not suffering your true self is not suffering your True self is not even incarnated in this world, but simply projecting an aspect of itself into this story. And we have to learn to detach from that ID, I am this aspect, I am this person. This person is just a momentary projection that comes out of yourself. But fear of life is actually the same thing like fear of death <laughs> because if we are not afraid of death then we drop that attachment to the personality why are we not doing it because we are still having that idea if I let it, if I let go of that if I let go of that identification what well, then nothing remains <laughs> but of course you remain your wonderful beautiful divine being remains. <laughs> but I can very much sympathize with what you are telling because <laughs> I have had a lot of that also. <laughs> Shall we leave it at that or do you want to say something more about it? Uh, I I thought about experiences uh, that we have here, that we get, because uh, some people have very, get very strong experiences in this life. Uh, some people might be less uh, strong. And uh, mm, when I was in, this, in, that, uh, <laughs> in that situation, I thought that maybe in last uh, projection on last life I did something wrong and something bad and uh, so on something unconscious and uh, that's why this life uh, allows me to to understand this to understand my mistakes uh, so I I got this understanding that time that uh, it's it was not in vain uh, that I felt that uh, feelings that um, so that nothing um, um, that we can't get away with something and if we do something unconscious that it returns so like I saw it that everything returns to us like we behave it comes to us <laughs> Yeah. And uh, we feel it ourselves in our, in our sake, what maybe we did uh, before. 
Uh, I don't remember in this life that I did something very bad, but uh, I, as I understood it, that um, it happened maybe in my previous projections in my previous life that I was some, um, I did something uh, unconscious and something wrong. That's why I, I get this lesson to go through. Uh, as, uh, this is like I understood it. <laughs> To, to get some experience to and to change myself it's not really that you are being punished the the, the thing of being punished uh, that is we can forget about it it's it's not that the universe is punishing or God is punishing or somebody is punishing but no. we are here to learn and to grow and if we fail to understand and learn a lesson, then we may have new chances to do so. Yes, I didn't take it as punishment, but yeah. just I getting a lesson just to understand yes. right. the right way, like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so what you are. That's what you are here for: to learn, to grow, yeah. and to outgrow all this. <laughs> yes, I see. Okay, Werner. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <coughs> yes. If there is anybody who now would like to come in, then you can come in. And if that is not the case, then we can stop. Werner, I have a small question. Yes, you are welcome. This is Kirsten. Hi. It's just to what you were talking with Nelly about. Uh, I really like the, the expression you say, to end the story. I think that's a nice way to put it. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I have a question about that because then it seems that there's a notion that uh, when the, the being is projecting itself, it's to experience something, but not to experience ending the stories. It's, it seems like that's the only thing that uh, is not counting as uh, getting richer for the experience. Do you understand what I mean? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. That uh, as long as you are projected in this world, then from moment to moment, you're getting richer for the experience. And if uh -huh, you simply yeah. cut it off, then uh, that uh, process is being cut off. <laughs> mm, mm. So there's less time to get richer. <laughs> but, uh, there, there is then, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's in a way a pity, having gone through the whole trouble of growing up, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> then after that to cut it short, and, and still not having basically gone through what was intended. There is a basic intents are there, where it should go, what should be learned. There is always the possibility that uh, it can go much beyond that. But uh, there is there those is those basic cases. intents there that uh, what we should learn, what we should go through, in order to have that experience and if we cut it off, then uh, in a way, uh, the incarnation may have been wasted. Mm. Yeah, I was just curious to hear your take on that. <laughs> yeah. Even when I, I mean, I had that a lot when I was very young. And then after that, when I was really mad with wanting to get somewhere, <laughs> mm. wanting to get enlightened, sometimes I thought uh, it's, it's just uh, it can only be better getting out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Amma would tell me this kind of stuff, say, hey, come on, you have gone through the whole trouble, 
under uh, all you have done so far, do you want to throw it away in one moment? <laughs> the possibility to to make out something of that situation. Mm. It's like we are just throwing away a, a beautiful possibility. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, I was just curious. It's I mean, not that if, I'm, I'm in the situation. <laughs> I can understand if somebody is really terminally ill and the body is just paining and paining that mm. they say at a certain moment, no, it's enough. Now I have suffered enough. And there is also, I can accept that there is dignity to say, no, I'm getting out of this now. Mm, mm. But this, it's different than when we are in New York, uh, in the usual life story, and th there's not such a reason to really go out, but simply because I cannot accept that, that things are the way they are, then it's much more fruitful to learn to accept and make something out of it than try to escape it by committing suicide. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, because it also makes me think in Greenland, more in the old days, it was a tr tradition when the old people uh, got too old or too ill to contribute to society, they would just walk out on the ice. Oh, yeah. And that was, was this expression, he walked out on the ice. And, um, but that was also with that dignity that you're talking about. Not right, because I, can, I can appreciate, I can accept that. Mm. It's not that we forever and ever have to stick out anything <laughs> for however much of time. But uh, I mean, people hope by going out of this life to solve their problems and most probably it doesn't. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see the difference, yeah. Right. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> okay, then I think we are stopping the satsang for today.